change, but it's very distinct. But humidity is something that is growing and growing. So climate change is, is making the seasons less? Yes. Really? And warmer, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything's warmer. And maybe you are, I don't know, it's winter, it's not cold, and then you have a huge storm in Buenos Aires. All Buenos Aires is underwater. Javier was telling us yesterday that in Quito it's just like always the same. Yeah, it's same, yes. like Los Angeles. It's weird. Same temperature always. Right? Yes, Quito is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's my weird. daughter was just in Peru and I was very confused. It's like, when do you were at the beach? When do you need a coat? What do you do? Because <laughs> they were at the beach and not Machu Picchu. Yeah, the same is is Ecuador. You can do wherever you yeah. want in two hours. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, we ready? We are ready, yes. Okay, great. Let's start again. So tell us your name, your program. My name is Ana Laura Lobo. I'm the program director of... <laughs> <laughs> That's for the blooper reel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so my name is Ana Laura Lobo. I'm the academic director of the program Argentina Social Movements and Human Rights. By training, I am a sociologist. I did my postgraduate studies about social movements and middle classes uh, perceptions. And I teach also in the public university of Buenos Aires, the University of Buenos Aires, in the chair of human rights. Uh, what did you, what uh, drew you to this field, specifically in the focus on human rights? What, what was it about? this or in your background that made you interested in this area? I have to ask you something. Is it important for you that I tell that I work in the Nobel Prize chair? Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah. So I will tell that. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so let me let me think is cultura para la paz, peace, culture and human rights. Okay. So I also teach in Peace, Culture and Human Rights Chair of the Nobel Prize Adolfo Perez Esquivel at the UBA, the Public University of Buenos Aires. I'm sorry, I said we wouldn't do this, but say that again, but a little bit slower. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and now I'm going to be like Justin. <laughs> My drama professor told me the same. All the things I speak very... Yeah, yeah. okay, so... Um, I teach at the Public University, the University of Buenos Aires, in the chair of peace, culture, and human rights, chaired by Adolfo Perez Esquivel, the Nobel Prize of Peace from Argentina. So how, um, how were you drawn to this field? What was it about your background or your studies that drew you to the field of, of human rights? Okay. Well, Argentina has a deep history about human rights. It was a leading country in the region and that worked for human rights, especially after the dictatorships of the South Korn. So it's a big issue for an Argentinian student of sociologists, for example. And when I was very young, I was part of the collective memory chair at the UBA, but I wasn't a student. So my my first research experiences was about were about collective memory and human rights. So it was something maybe natural for me to go to human rights. Yeah. What what is your research show? What is collective memory significant and important in a country like Argentina and the development of that country? What what does that mean? Tell me a little mm -hmm. more about it. Okay, the field of collective memory is mainly centered on the process of, you know, the way of remembering and deal with the past uh, about the last dictatorship. Now is something that we're working collective memory in other areas. Well, my thesis was about collective memory around the 2001, the crisis of 2001 and some killings that took place in 2002. But, uh, you know, the field was built mainly uh, about the last dictatorship. And, um, and something important I have to say <laughs> is that I was telling you that we are a leading country in 
human rights and collective memory processes. One of the foundational books of Argentina is Nunca Mas, it's an informal done, a report done by, by a commission that was built to investigate the crimes did during the, <coughs> the last dictatorship. So after, after Argentina, a lot of countries did the same, the same book and it was a foundational report to, to build these processes of truth, memory, truth and justice. Mm -hmm. And of course we are, you know, we, we have trials, we have trials. Uh, actually, there are a lot of militaries that are being condemned right now, still, still, so yes. So it's still missing, there, there are sons and daughters are missing? Sons, daughters, and, how do you say, nietos? Babies? Sons? Yes, the baby, because during the dictatorship, when mothers, when women were pregnant, they kept alive until the, the baby is born, and then the militaries took the babies and maybe gave the babies to another families that were aligned with them, <coughs> or different, different things. There are at least 400 babies that are not, we don't know where they are. No. Babies that now they have, you know, 40 years. Yeah. Uh, last week, the the baby two, no, I'm sorry, the baby 128 was, you know, he, he knew about his family. Wow. So it's a very current thing. Yeah. Yes. For example, when I was researching in the Instituto de Investigaciones Chino Germani, my fellow, a person of my age, you know, a sociolog sociologist, he found out that he was a, baby of disappearance. Oh my gosh. Yes, so it's, you know, it's very relevant for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yes. wow. It just shakes shake your world. Yes. Yes. What, what, what drew you to the field of study abroad and to SIT in particular? What is it about this work that you like to do? I love my work. <laughs> I really love my work. I love the... Um, the opportunities we have uh, to connect the theoretical aspects with film and knowing and being inspired uh, by people that is working really hard in social movements, grassroots organizations, teachers that are also activists. And I think that for students that's a great opportunity. And another thing that I really like is that my students got the chance to understand that human rights has a cultural definition also, and human rights is not only the things you can find in law, like reading, but also that, for example, in South America, human rights is something that we have to fight for, and we cannot think about warranting social uh, human rights without social movements fighting for that. So. Not just in South America, huh? No, no, <laughs> yes, of course, of course, but yeah, I'm, I'm talking from my, my experience, of course. Right. But, but you know, you have the gap you have between institutionality and what really happens is not that, I think, is not that big. We have, you know, we have very progressive law. We have beautiful law, beautiful, about migration, about environmental rights about indigenous communities. If you if you study that law, you say, oh my God, this this country. And but the gap between the law, the written law, and what actually happens is huge. It's really huge. So you have to be pushing all the time to get something of that. And but I don't know. It's my it's my opinion. Maybe you find that the gap here in in the states is the same. But I have the feeling that no. I think we're, our, our gap, I mean, our laws are eroding, they're going in the opposite direction. But I can see why, with, to, to help bridge that gap, that the culture can be instrumental in helping to do that. Am I, am I right? Yes. So, yes. culture, the arts, 
people can create a living bridge yes. to the law. Yes, and we have a beautiful tradition in social movements. They are very creative and, of course, working with no resources. They are always on the street and also in latency periods they are working in neighborhood with different tools that you can not imagine if you don't see that by yourself, right? I don't know, from artistic repertories, doing maybe territorial work, it's really inspiring. So what kind of students are drawn, what kind of American students are drawn to your program? Uh, look at, and, um, and what characteristics best suit a student who wants to do this program? Well, um, the kind of students that come to my program are the ones that are very interested in women rights, gender rights, diversity, indigenous communities, environmental rights, economics, politics, and also my students are really passionate. Are really passionate about politics, and maybe most of them have some activism experience in the states and want to learn more from South America, at least from Argentina. And, and what I what I like of my students is that they are not coming on vacation. You know, they are not coming to I don't know, go to a bar. They go, of course, they have fun, but they are really investing on that, on the semester and learning, and they take the opportunities, not all of them, of course, but I have, uh, I don't know, from the 25, at least 18 are very on the program, are very interested on the topics. And the careers they are pursuing, maybe, International poly, uh, international relations, how do you say? International relations. International relations, yes. The students that come to my program are from international studies or relationships, sociology, anthropology, social work, especially now that we have the internships. A lot of students from social work and psychology are coming. Um, yes. Talk a little know. bit about the internships. What kind of opportunities are available to them with the internships? Well, it's not about the kind of opportunities that are available, but that we work, we receive the profile of the students and the interests they have, and we try to find the best position or the best institution uh, within our, our networks to work with. Not only because of the theme or the area, but also the kind of work they want to do. Maybe our students that, that prefer to work with a social movement and not with an international NGO, no advocacy, but working in the territory. So we try to find, we try to meet expectations. So every semester is a huge work, but every semester we're working with that. So you really sort of tailor the internship toward the students' interests. It's yes. not like there's a set area where no. they... Wow, that's, yes. that's really extraordinary. Yes. And what about the research? What kind of research are your students doing on their, their independent research projects? Well, the main areas are reproductive and health rights, reproductive and sexual health rights, women's rights, LGBTQ diversity, Afro-descendants, uh, Afro-community in Argentina, indigenous communities, maybe the, the mix between indigenous communities and environmental rights because of the, the fight is, is given in their territories, it's something that happens everywhere. <laughs> um, yes, environmental rights, let me check. I think there are the main areas. And sometimes they come with an idea that we are not, that we, we just didn't think about that, and we try to develop that. I think that the most, uh, yeah, I love that, to work with a new idea of a student that is very young and I didn't think about that before, so I, maybe I discovered a new area, so that's really, 
engaging with my of my pro my work on that pro. So that you're very open minded about what they bring to you. Yes. And of course my so excuse me, are we giving that banging noise? Thank you so much, Jack. I can I can sing if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Of course, yeah, now they stop. Yeah, they're from the Argentinian. So it's in that program. And it's a wrap. <laughs> that's yeah. a success. That's a hit. <laughs> I, I, I think yeah, it's coming yeah, through yeah. the lapel mic. Okay. I think we're okay. okay. So can you sort of describe, um, you know, an average day before the, what, uh, what the students would be doing and where they would be staying and sort of the whole immersive aspect of, of okay. your program? And, be and before you start, sorry, the, um, your button is clicking against the lapel mic there. Uh, what? Yeah, this, I think that'll be okay. Uh, okay, a typical day. Okay, a typical day in Argentina, I must say, in Buenos Aires in human rights program is very intensive. So they stay in, the students stay in homestays. We try to be near to the CEDES, to CEDES, which is the institution that we that we work, when we where we work I'm sorry. Um, but you know Buenos Aires is a huge city so sometimes some students are in Palermo, another neighborhood and some some others of them are in Almagro, so it's very... Uh, okay, they stay in homestays, they took the breakfast in her homestay, and then in her or his homestay they come to Ceres, and maybe we will have a classroom session. They read, they have cl classroom hours, it's not that experiential learning, it's only going on excursions. I always say, say that it's a double work experiential learning because I have to guarantee myself and the group that they all know where they are, why we are going there, why it's important to know about this. So be very prepared to have an encounter and a deep and respectful encounter with the community. So maybe during the morning we have a session about a theoretical aspect or maybe about, I don't know, social movement theories and then they have the lunch and depending on the day they go to Spanish class to UVA in the downtown or we go to do a visit related to the to the classroom seminar. Do they need Spanish before they come? Yes. So they need to be fluent? Well the requirement is a three semester of Spanish they gain a lot of fluency while they are there because it's a, you know, they have the homestay, they have the classroom, the, the lessons with the UVA. They do all the, the lectures and work in Spanish, so they develop a good, good skills on Spanish. But yes, of course, they have tutoring, individual tutoring if they, if they need it. Um, of course, that if they better understand, they will better understand everything. But if they don't, um, if they are not fluent, we try to go with them to, you know, uh, help them to better understand. Are there dialects or indigenous languages that they, they become familiar with while they're there? Do they need to understand Not that actually, or? no. They only have one class with the Mapuche community in which they learn about the, the culture and cosmovision of the Mapuche community because it's very important for us that they understand the relationship that indigenous communities have with land. It's not land, the, the exact word, but it's territorio. Uh, so in, in that encounters, yes, we talk about Mapuzungun, which is the, the language they, spoke, they speak, but they don't have any class. Although I have a student right now that is doing her PhD and she came back to study Mapusungum to the Patagonia. Do, do you keep in touch with a lot of your alumni? Yes. Yeah. Tell us about some of what some of them are doing, like this one. Okay. Three, three or four of my, or my students are in Argentina, actually, with Fulbright's research grants 
or with some boyfriends or girlfriends also. <laughs> <laughs> this is when personal and academics <laughs> go together. Uh, they are researching. I have students doing law school. I have students that are working in Amnesty, in Amnesty International Human Rights Campaign, in, I think in Washington. Um, yes, let me check. There are a lot of students that are working or studying in environmental studies. Yes, um, I think, yes. Is that rewarding for you to stay in touch with them? Yes. To see their yes. to see their, their progress in their future? Yes. It's really scary when they get married and have children. So <laughs> <laughs> but all the, the professional stuff, yes, it's really rewarding. Next. I have a real connection with the students. I love that. I don't I don't get uh, how do you say it in English? I don't get I don't get tired of the students. I love that part of the program, being with them. Are there considerations for students who uh, are from the LGBTQ community in Argentina, for when they come to Argentina, or are there considerations for someone who might need accessibility or, or assistance, like someone who yes, has I, special needs? Of course, yes. Um, our center is is prepared to receive students with maybe disabilities in terms of walking or moving. And in terms of GLTBQ, what do you mean? The students said that are that are have are you know have gender fluid maybe identified with. Yes. It. No, no, I understand the concept, but what do you mean about? I mean, is there a cultural sensibility that they will encounter in Argentina? Ah. No, of course we, we tackle the issue during orientation and because of the program theme we work with GLBTQ organizations and it's a part of our, our content so it's something that is very explicit to, for all the students of course to learn more about these issues or these rights in local agenda. Uh, some of our students maybe do their they last semester two of them did their internships in GLBTQ institution and it was very rewarding for them because it was a way to not only better understand but also because I think the states are very how do you say you are you have a lot of fights won <laughs> in that terms. We have an egalitarian marriage, we have a lot of, in terms of law, one more time, but they both work, my bo both the students work with GLBTQ refugees in Argentina, from Russia and Jamaica, Jamaica, and the other one work with violence between, among lesbian community. Uh, so it was very rewarding for them to, you know, also teach about what they already know from from the states, mm -hmm. but they don't need you know special. Of course, you say it's a gay friendly country, but stupid people are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to yes, <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. No, and of course we we train the families to be in in this century. Your home state Yeah. I'll pause here to change the battery. Okay. So we're just trying to frame the answer in a non competitive way with my partner, with my colleagues, because we have three programs in Argentina. We'll talk about that then. Uh, you can talk about the fact that SIT has. Uh, fall of 2019. Fall of oh, 2019. Yeah. And one thing I didn't tell you, and it's very important, I don't know how to... Are we going? We are rolling, yes. Okay. Every fall, every fall, we go to the National Encounter of Women, which this is a national encounter, of course, that takes place in different states of Argentina every year, and around 
60,000 or 70,000 women got together, get together and work in small workshops for two days. And it's the place where the Campaña Nacional por el Aborto Seguro, Legal y Gratuito, which is the legal abortion we are fighting for, uh, has his base, if you want, her base, if you want. So every fall we go there with the students, there is a unique opportunity because it's not a conference of white women talking about gender rights, but it's a grassroots encounter. So different type of women from different backgrounds get together and it's, you know, it's a very nutritive encounter for everybody. Um, that is really special. This year we are going to Puerto Madryn, which is in, the, in Patagonia. The encounter will take place in Trelew. So with the part of the group that is not interested in the, going to the National Encounter of Women, or also with the boys, we are going to dig on other things about environmental rights. We are going to see the whales and the penguins. <laughs> and with the, the larger group, because I think I have like 17 girls this semester, we are going to the National Encounter of Women. Can the boys go to the no. encounter? No, they can't. They can go to the march, the final march, which is huge. And we go with them, of course, at the end of the, of the big march. It's a very interesting, I think it's the most interesting and important political or maybe the most important social movement and protest that we are witnessing. Is it, is it right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> with, <coughs> and well, today the, the senators are voting for the legalization of the abortion. Okay. And you know that. Have you seen the New York Times? The, the, not the cover, but the other one? I saw it online. You saw it? Mm -hmm. Okay, they put a big, a big green uh, cover that said, Senators of Argentina, the world is looking, the world is watching you because today they are voting. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> wow. Is it an ad or is it an editorial comment? Uh, it has the sign of um, Amnesty International. Uh -huh. but. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so this is it really, like, how do you expect it, it will go? I think they won't pass the law. No. No, because we have, we have a, we know the Pope is Argentina. We also have the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> but also the Irish, the, also the Irish uh, senators did a public uh, manifestation to Argentinian senators to say, hey, we we deal with this. We're the same. There you go. You guys yes. are always the kind and of they're yeah. very Catholic, so right. But uh, you know we are in a very conservative uh, environment now. Our vice president is very Catholic. She's part of the very conservative part of Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, the Nobel Prize is also Catholic, but he works with the third world. Priest. Mm -hmm. So it's another kind of Catholicism, mm -hmm. very next to her. Like liberation theology. Yeah, that's it's exactly that. So if, if we study the numbers, no, it won't pass today. And we have this thing that if it won't pass today, we have to, we, we have to wait for one, year, one complete year to have treatment again in the in diputados, not in senado, not in the senate, but in diputados, the other camera. Like the house would, would, would be here. Uh, but the fact that it's even coming to a vote is significant, right? It's gotten to the point where it's the conversation has reached that level. Yes, because we had we had at least I don't remember the exact number of attempts to you know that the project were, were, was presented to the house, the parliament, and wasn't uh, treated. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time that the project is treated. And it's a very long fight of women movement, you know? It'll be a really very interesting time for your students to be there this fall and to be at this conference. Yes, it's historic. The students of last semester was, 
we are living, yes, in an historical moment, and I think that this semester will be very exciting in that field. And also, so if it doesn't pass and it has to wait another year, then the students who go in fall 2019 will be yes. at the sort of at the cusp of yet another uh, another historic moment. Yes, yes. In terms of you know the effervescence and the number of women and of course boys in the streets, but I think that today you can go now that because it's happening right now. Uh, I think that they were expecting two million people in front of the Congress, from the green part, the, the, from the legalization part, and you have another smaller part that are pro-choice, no, not pro-life, they say, yeah. save the two life, so, it's the, so yes, it's a historical moment about that. Yeah. We have another, another historical moment happening right now, because again, we took that from MF, I, FMAE, is, no, International Monetary Funds, IMF. So we took that again, yes. Uh, in terms of economics and sovereignty, I think it's a very interesting moment. We have US base again, next to mining projects areas also. And I think that, yes, in, environmental and mining projects, in different types of mining projects I'm talking about, you know, it's a very hard moment also. And another thing that is happening is the, how do you say this? I'm trying to find the concept in English. When the country get lands, give lands to foreign care. The, the concept in Spanish is extranjerización, you know, like foreignization of lands, because our lands, especially in Patagonia, where the water is, now maybe a lot of U.S. big uh, big fish are are now owning these lands. So private, the corporate ownership of those lands or some kind of protection movement of those lands? We are trying to protect that, but... but uh, yes. Ah. So there's... For example, Turner. Ted Turner or Luciano Benetton. They are, they are having our lands now. But, uh, last, last year, the first, August the 1st of last year, uh, an activist was killed in Luciano Benetton's lands wow. because he were protesting for Mapuche's rights. So it's so, really key for, for the mobilization of the indigenous communities to be able to organize against that kind of... Yes, and work with, in solidarity with another organizations because we have this historical problem of invisibilization of our Afro communities because the our Afro communities and our indigenous communities. One thing you, if you learn about Argentina, the first thing maybe you can find in Wikipedia or I don't know in the blog is no in Argentina there are not black people because they were killed. We come from we come from Europe. No, but we we like to think that we are white and European. <laughs> but but there are a lot of Afro yes. descendant communities. Yes. Yeah. Yes and. During the last 10 years, social movements and the last government worked a lot to visibilize them and to give them uh, more rights, of course, or not to, not to give them, but to warranty mm -hmm. their rights. So, yes. But we have, you know, this long-term culture, like a sedimental culture that we think about ourselves as white European people. Mm -hmm. And we have these, um, you know, the same, maybe the, the same kind of perceptions you can, you can see between US and Mexico, we have with our Bolivia, Peru, Paraguay, Chile and Uruguay, no. But 
It's like, we are the Europeans, <laughs> that's cool. So that's really, it's not a microcosm that there are so many issues that are taking place in Argentina that have, that, that translate to those, the same types of issues, whether it's truth and reconciliation or the racism within the communities that are, that are applicable yes. all over the world. Yes. I think it's a very rich experience for a student of human rights and social movements or students that are interested in activism. Argentina gives a lot of opportunities. It's a very complex country. And of course, a lot of, of issues are global. Yeah. I feel like we're, we're almost at the end of our time. Is there anything else about that you want to include that you think is important to talk about? Mm. No, I would like to stress uh, I don't want to be, you know, the first day of camp when I say when I say to students, you must be b -b 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 -b. no, I won't say that yet. Uh, no, no, I would like to stress these areas that we talked about, but Okay, no, I think it's okay. Okay. Do you want something else? Like I, no, I think we covered a lot. We were sort of all over the place, but yeah, I think we have a great uh, information. And if you think about it, I don't know. What yeah, and let me about. zoom in on you here, and then we're good. I need the. <laughs> no, there is no problem because I between the break and uh, and teeth that already started. Oh, yeah, yeah. So okay. I will go there. Okay, so the feminism part. What did I say? You said that it's a this social change will come from feminism, oh. and that you have echo feminism, popular feminism, radical feminism. Sí, okay. Um, creo que es una oportunidad histórica única para las estudiantes y los estudiantes interesados en estudios de género, estudios de mujeres, venir a aprender y presenciar el cambio social que yo estoy segura que va a venir de la mano de los movimientos de mujeres feministas y en particular como se sucede en Latinoamérica vinculados al ecofeminismo y al feminismo popular de base territorial y un feminismo radical. Creo que eso en conjunción con otros movimientos sociales como son los ambientalistas o ecologistas más los movimientos de pueblos originarios están haciendo de Argentina un escenario muy interesante para analizar los movimientos sociales. ¡Bravo! <risa> <risa> Chicos, 